What you're seeing here is an early look at the strategy RPG that I am developing. The game has inspirations from various games I enjoy, most notably the Fire Emblem series, which is the closest series to compare it to. Other games in the genre have inspired me too, such as the first SRPGs I ever played, the Shining Force series, along with games like Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Ogre, and the very unique Valkyria Chronicles series. Overall, the game is intended to lean more into the strategy side, with tactical turn-by-turn -turn decision making being prioritized over RPG mechanics like building your units. My hopes are that I will take experiences that I love, add some twists, and craft something quite engaging. A major part of the game that will help it stand out is what I refer to as the Link system. Each playable character has what is called a Link talent. When you initiate an attack against an enemy, allies of your character who are adjacent to the enemy will trigger their Link talents. These vary greatly, some being very powerful, and finding the best ways to use them will lead to an easier victory. This system will reward positioning and consideration of the best order to move your characters, the player having to determine which links they could trigger to best help them in a particular situation. In SRPGs, finding yourself in a difficult position can be very exciting. Those situations where you have to figure out how to climb out of the hole you found yourself in and consider all the options at your disposal. The satisfaction when you succeed in these circumstances where you thought you may lose is amazing. My hope is that the Link system offers the tools to do that when your back is against the wall. Another system the game will include is what I currently refer to as the template system. During battles, the player can spare enemies. Currently, this is automatically triggered by flanking the opponent and initiating the non-lethal attack. Defeating them this way will spare them. This is another reward for positioning and leads to various benefits, one in particular being that you can recruit these spared enemies by paying a resource. When you do so, a character template is randomly chosen and applied to them. A character template will include a name, portrait, stack growths, as well as skills and spells gained on level up. This gives the player the opportunity to make their army their own. Perhaps they want more characters of a certain class than is provided normally by recruited characters. Something I want to give special care to are pain points in SRPGs. I love the genre, but there are things here and there, minor and major, that can negatively impact the experience. For example, something minor is the inventory management can be a pain. While something simple like trading items around your party can be tedious with the controller, a PC-based game with mouse control and enough resolution to have multiple item windows open at once can help expedite the process. Something else I've included to help expedite things are special tooltip windows. Hovering a unit will give you the most critical information about them quickly. In a game like Fire Emblem, you might spend time moving your unit up to various enemies in range to see how combat between the two may fare, or you may open up stat screens and do some mental math. I've included another solution. When you have a character selected, you can hover enemy units to get a mini version of the combat forecast, helping you get an idea of what you're up against quickly. Another pain point are those times where you need to move many characters across a battlefield. I took inspiration from Valkyria Chronicles and implemented a system where you can capture camps and use those to retreat your characters and summon them to other camps. This also gives another objective on the battlefield, which gives the player more to consider for their strategy. Another thing I considered is how to handle characters being defeated in battle. Making it too punishing or too forgiving can be easy. While I enjoy the tension brought by permadeath in Fire Emblem, it can also be very frustrating when you make a small mistake late into a battle. With this in mind, I had two ideas. The first is giving the player another tool to avoid that mistake. One of the protagonist characters has a shield guard skill, which makes it so when the adjacent ally is under attack and is about to receive a lethal blow, she can elect to take the hit for them. This gives her a special presence amongst your army, even if she's not your strongest combat unit. How protagonists are represented in strategy games varies and is an interesting question, and I think a character with his ability is an interesting answer, as she stands as a central figure that you will base your strategies around. Another way to handle the frustration of losing a unit is with a resource that I'll call Karma. Completing side objectives in battle gains you this resource, and enough of it can reverse a character death at the end of battle. This means that as long as you're generally playing well, a big mistake once in a while can be forgiven. I've also put work into creating a campaign editor for the game. It is very helpful for my own development of the game, and I don't see why I wouldn't share it with players. Looking at various strategy games, it seems that there are plenty of brilliant players who love to create experiences and share them with others, often with great results. From Warcraft 3's campaign editor, to the player-made campaigns in Battle for Westnoth, to the incredible Fire Emblem ROM hacking community, I see so many skilled creators who do amazing works if they have the tools to do so. My hopes are that my game could have enough popularity to have a modest custom content scene of its own. Okay, let's take a look at the map editor that I have created.
As you can see, it's very quick and easy to throw down some tiles to create a basic battlefield, which is good, since a quick and easy editor means quick and easy iteration of a map design and enemy placement, which is quite critical for a fun SRPG map. Let's speed through this part. Let's create a unit. As you can see, there is a get from party checkbox. If this is not checked, it'll create a new instance of that actor. This would be for like a situation where you had multiple generic soldiers all using the same actor object. This would be usually more for enemies or uh, non-playable characters. Let's create an enemy. So even though the enemy is a predefined actor object, you can adjust their stats individually if you want to. Additionally, you could adjust their inventories individually as well. And then down at the bottom here, you adjust their uh, code block for Lua for things like AI or other scripted information. And then cool, we've got a very basic battlefield all set up in no time at all. Let's take a look at the editor in general. As you can see, there are many things that you can define for characters and for other things in the game, such as weapons or weapon types, etc. You can also set up the animations here. It's very rough looking at the moment, I know, this is mostly just for my development. Um, before release, I would clean that up to be a little bit nicer for the user to use. In order to set up logic for various things in the game that both I and a potential user could write, I wanted a scripting language. I went with Lua because it's pretty often used in games. How much you use it for is really up to you, and from what I've read, some games use it for a lot of the game's logic, while others might just use a little bit. I don't have any prior experience, so I was pondering how I should go about using it. I came up with a system that I felt worked for my project, giving enough freedom, but still most of the game is handled on the C-sharp side. How it works is that all of these classes share a common parent that has a block of Lua code. Then in certain situations, I'll call certain events. For a simple example, I might call onCalculateWeaponRanges and expose some variables to play with on the Lua side. Then I'd collect all of these, add their associated function if they had one, and call all of them. The unit, their class, the tile they're standing on, their weapon, etc. Maybe you have a tile that is a tower, and when a ranged character stands on it, it triggers its onCalculateWeaponRanges function to add to the maximum range of that character's weapons. Such a simple system still has tons of flexibility, allowing you to create custom skills with ease, or perhaps some custom objectives on a map, etc., allowing you to create some very engaging and creative design. The main engine is written using the Monogame Framework, an awesome framework that is associated with some popular games, including Stardew Valley. I find it pretty enjoyable. It's an alternative to using an engine like Unity. While this means you'll have to code in some extra things yourself, it can be rather liberating. Investigate for yourself before using it, however. The game you have in mind could most likely be created faster with an engine. I choose to use Monogame out of personal preference. The campaign editor uses the IMGUI library to create a very quick UI. It looks very basic, but for developer tools, it's fantastic. You can't beat the speed in which you can throw an editor together and start building. There is a .NET wrapper for it, just look at the NuGet package manager. The game uses Moonsharp as the Lua interpreter. Moonsharp is generally pretty easy to use and powerful, though I should note that the main repo hasn't had an update in a while. I've been playing around with it before this project, so I just stuck with it, but perhaps investigate other alternatives if you want a Lua interpreter. I've been thinking of doing that myself, but I haven't had many problems, so it's not really a priority. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the first video I've ever made, so I appreciate your patience if it was a bit awkward. I really appreciate any comments you may have, including advice or other suggestions. This really was just a general overview. If there's a topic you're curious about, feel free to ask and perhaps I could make a quick video on it. I hope the project intrigues you. Have a great day.